This is an unsponsored video that contains products provided without charge by the manufacturer for demonstration purposes. All opinions are my own. Okay, so I'm in the middle of my fireplace installation and the next thing I want to do is run the gas line. Now, that's probably the part that freaks most people out is dealing with the gas because obviously they think, you know, if there's a gas leak, it could be an explosion in the house and ruin your life. And I get that. But gas is not as complicated as you think. In fact, it's probably, I would say, safer than electricity. I would bet more people die from shock than they do from explosions. I can't back that up. It's just a gut feel. When I applied for my permit, one of the permits that I had to get was a plumbing permit, and that is the modification of the gas piping. That's considered plumbing. And uh, this is the way my house was piped to begin with. I have the meter is over here, and then a big pipe, which is a one-inch pipe, comes across into the furnace room. And from there it goes to the water heater, then it goes to the furnace, and then it goes to the stove. Typically, the easiest way to install another appliance is to go at the end of the line. And because you have to actually disconnect the pipe, the most recent one that was added, and add on to it. But because I have such a far run through my garage, I didn't think that that was going to get approved. In fact, I spoke to a friend of mine who is an HVAC guy, and he said that judging from the number of appliances that I have here, that if this was new construction, I would have to have inch and a quarter pipe coming from the gas meter. And I was hoping that they would approve this plan without having to run new a, a new gas main all the way through the house. That would have been a lot of work. So I proposed that I install a, what's known as a manifold here in the furnace room, or slash shop. And from there, I would split off to each one of these appliances. So at least that way, it gets them an even amount of pressure. Whereas in the old plan, in this situation, if this appliance was on and this appliance was on, this one may not get enough gas. Certainly the fireplace, if the other three were on, would not get enough gas, potentially. So this actually alleviates that because it gets them all from the same manifold. Now to do that, I have this type of a thing here. This is where the one inch pipe is going to come, and then it's going to split off to these four different pipes and that's going to go to those four different appliances. And over here is a plug on the end so that if I ever needed to, I could always expand the system, but I doubt I'm ever going to need to. But you never know. A typical gas pipe is, they look like this. This is half inch regular gas pipe. Now, these days, they've got a new product called, and I don't know how new it is, but it's new for me, let's put it that way. This is called CSST, which stands for Corrugated Stainless Steel Tubing. And let me take the cap off here. So you can see on the inside there is corrugated stainless steel, and it's got this yellow plastic wrap on it to protect it. And what I've done is I have that run from the fireplace through my garage, which is over there. And this is the gas line. I, it's just loosely put in there for now and I ran it so that it goes into the hole in the wall there. Now remember, there are going to be cabinets here, so that's not going to matter. This will be covered. It won't be exposed like it is. And those holes in the wall will be covered as well. So that runs up the wall, and I snaked it so that it comes out the top, and I'm going to run it across the ceiling and down behind those storage, and I drilled a hole that goes down into the shop. You can barely see it there. And it comes out the wall. Let's see. You can see right there, I drilled a hole through the, the sill plate. So that comes from the garage. And it goes... It's one long piece right now. That's what I've got here. So now I have to cut that up. And I have to dismantle all this metal, all this uh, iron pipe, and redo it. That's what I committed to doing, and that's what I'm going to do now. Alright, sorry about the noise, but this is my gas meter, and you know, yours could look different, but no matter what, you're going to have a shutoff that has a lock on it. You can see this, when it's shut off, they can actually put a lock through it, 
and that's how they can, uh, you know, if you if you don't pay your bill, they can turn off your gas and lock it. So I'm going to use an adjustable wrench on here and just now the gas to the whole house is turned off. I also have a whole bunch of fittings here that I need to connect the CSST pipe. And this is the way it looks when it's in the, the manifold. This uh, gets taped in here and this gets squeezed on with this ring. I'll show you that in a little while. But um, it's really pretty straightforward. And of course, this is the thread tape that I'm going to use. It's a whole lot cleaner than the old-fashioned pipe dope. This I'm going to reuse. I'm just going to connect CSST pipe here. Now unfortunately I failed to add a union up here where this goes to the stove. So I'm left with this situation here. Even though I took off this piece, I'm left with this situation where I can't loosen the rest of them. So I actually have to cut the pipe. Now you can cut a pipe with gas in it. It is not going to explode. But use a hacksaw, not a sawzall. A sawzall vibrates the heck out of everything and it's more likely to start causing leaks. So this is the best thing to do and it's just going to take a while. Now I'm using this uh, gas rated Teflon tape instead of pipe dope because it's an awful lot cleaner. Uh, not only <laughs> your hands putting it on but also taking it off so the way this is going to go this is a what they call a three-quarter close nipple this is three quarters and this is an adapter that goes from three quarters to one inch because the rest of the house is one inch that main pipe so I just put a couple of threads on here and you always put it on in the direction as if you were tightening it. So this is the way I will tighten it in, so that's the way I put the tape on. So cutting the stainless steel tubing is really pretty easy. You can just use a regular tubing cutter. You want to cut it in between the corrugations and you always want to pull the tubing cutter so the wheel is in the front, the cutting wheel and you just tighten it a little bit every time you go around and it doesn't take much pressure and it doesn't take a lot of turning and when it cuts through you can take the tubing cutter off and then I find that there's always a little bit of a piece that doesn't doesn't come off then you take a knife and you have to cut it back an inch, they say. And you don't want to use the tubing cutter for this. Now, this is the connector that's going to connect it to the manifold. And the way this works, it's three parts. This part is what's going to go into the manifold. This is the nut that goes on here and then there's a retaining ring. The directions say the retaining ring goes right in the first valley they call it which is the first corrugation and then you just take a pair of pliers and you squeeze them down. This is really soft metal and then this piece I don't know if we could see this but this piece has a hardened like a washer on it it's not brass, so it's not soft. And that pushes down against that. Once you tighten this nut up, it's going to push down and flatten out this, this corrugation right here. And that's what makes the gas seal. Now with this end, before I actually tighten that on, I'm going to put it into the manifold. And I'm going to put my tape on in the direction I will turn it in. That's all I need to do. I just have to put four of those in. 
So furnace, stove, and water heater. The other one is going to be going to the fireplace. And for that, I need to put a shutoff valve on there. And then this will go in. So it's going to be kind of like this. The reason for that is because I don't have the fireplace fully installed yet, so I can't turn on that gas. So I need that shut off so I can turn off all the other I can turn on all the other appliances. So this uses a half inch close nipple and this gets threaded on the same way. Luckily that just clears that. I didn't think about it. I should have put it in ahead of time. Now it's ready for installation. Okay, that'll do. Now for a situation like this where my stove has a pipe coming out of it, I'm using a female connector on this end as opposed to the other one that screws in. This one screws on to this pipe. Okay. Okay. If you heard that but that was the pressure regulator so the house is pressurized now with gas now I'll go check for leaks again I just have a couple of squirts of dish soap in some water and an old brush and I just brush it on neatness doesn't count and anything that's leaking I'll see bubbles All right, here you can see it's all done and I labeled them. This is the stove, the furnace, the water heater goes right there. And this one goes to the fireplace. There is a shutoff valve there, so that is turned off. When I get the fireplace all hooked up, I can open that up and test that one as well. But the water heater comes down. The one on the left is the one that goes to the fireplace and the other two go to the stove and the furnace. That's the one going to the stove and the furnace comes down over the top into that T and then down into the furnace. The furnace is on and I don't have any leaks. Everything looks good. Now I can fire it back up. One thing to note is that CSST is vulnerable to damage because of lightning, so you have to ground it. And to do that, I opted to put a grounding rod in out by my gas meter. So here you can see the before picture, and there's the after. I pounded an 8-foot grounding rod into the ground and then attached it to the gas line going into the house, and that's how I accomplished that. Fire no! This one goes to the fireplace. There is a shutoff valve there. Hey, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and click that bell icon so you can make sure you'll see every one of the videos in this series as they come out. Thanks for watching.